Um, let's see, next up we have Lynn from uh, Google Research um, giving a talk on IANA, uh, reducing privacy risk on large scale recommendation models. Let's give her a hand. So good afternoon, everyone. So today I'm going to today I'm going to talk about our work, IANA, reducing the privacy risk um, on the large scale recommendation models. So uh, this is today's agenda. So I will start from the uh, motivation and then talk about the proposed method, IANA, and um, which is short for embedding aware noise addition and the privacy testing. And then I will show you a result on both the public data set and the industry data set. Uh, and I will summarize with final takeaways. So um, first for the uh, motivation in this work, we are trying to reduce the privacy risk of the um, large scale embedding based uh, deep neural networks. This type of neural networks has been successfully deployed on uh, many large scale recommendation models. Uh, while these models enabled uh, better, uh, enabled better um, personalized user experience, they also raise privacy concerns because uh, there is a potential to uh, leak user information that encoded in this kind of models. So uh, in this work, we trying to um, uh, see if we can find a way to train new models with better privacy protection. A common tool to train a private model is using uh, DPSGD. So um, the difference is, uh, yeah, the difference between DPSGD and the normal uh, SGD is that when uh, computing the gradient of uh, at each training example, DPSGD will uh, cut the uh, gradient and add noise to every parameters. So uh, the good thing of DPSGD is that the result is provably differentially private, but these two steps also come at a cost of both the training time and the accuracy. Uh, also, uh, it is even particularly challenging to apply DPSGD to large-scale embedding-based models due to an extra penalty in training speed. And I will show you uh, where this penalty comes from. So uh, usually the large recommendation, uh, embedding-based models are trained in a distributed fashion. That means we have a collection of parameter servers that hosting the model parameters. And then we have hundreds of workers that actually um, um, accessing the parameters and the, doing the training jobs locally. Um, a, very, uh, a key feature of the embedding-based model is that the embedding table comprises most of the model parameters. And, uh, but during the training step, each training example actually uh, contains only a very small portion of the vocabulary items, which means uh, it only touches a small, uh, like a few columns of the embedding table. So when the workers compute uh, gradient locally with their training examples, they actually only, um, they will get very sparse uh, model updates and they only communicate a very small amount of data uh, to the parameter server if training without the DPSGD, as shown in this figure, because the gradient are very sparse. However, when training with DPSGD, uh, we add noise to every param parameters. That means uh, the previously sparse gradient become dense now, and the workers will communicate the full embedding table to the parameter servers. Uh, this introduces a huge uh, communication and the computation overhead, and thus significantly slow down the training speed. It will make training, uh, it will make it very hard to train a large scale embedding based model, or even prohibitive to train such models. And um, so, 
Um, however, um, one thing to note is that the noise adding strategy introduced by DPSGD actually uh, satisfies DP's very strict definition in which uh, we assume that an attacker can see the models at each training step. But this is very generous to the attackers. And actually, uh, we are thinking maybe we can have a way to protect against a realistic attacker with, uh, even without adding noise like this. And the idea we propose is we only add noise to the model parameters that actually modified by training examples during each training step. And so we propose um, embedding aware noise addition, uh, YANA for short, to um, that's exactly this. So specifically, YANA is only add noise to the uh, model parameters with non-zero gradient. And in this way, it uh, resolves the uh, slowdown issue uh, of the traditional DPSGD. However, this benefit, it do comes uh, with a very important drawback, which is YANA doesn't guarantee uh, uh, strict differential pri privacy. So, uh, like intuitively, if an attacker can uh, have access to immediate trained model at each training step, YANA cannot provide a, a rigorous privacy guarantee. However, in a common situation, we, we can assume that an attacker can only access the final trained model. So, um, that means the attacker might get much less information because at the uh, Final training steps, almost every model parameters has been updated by uh, uh, during the training process. And so uh, the as a consequence, the noise we add to the model update may give um, like enough privacy protection. And um, so um, so uh, we also provide a very uh, detailed privacy analysis in our paper, and the privacy guarantee we provided with IANA is called, uh, it's kind of like data dependent. That means we do require the training data set to have certain kind of um, properties. And as shown in this figure, with such constraint, um, still we see that DPSGD provide a better uh, privacy compared to YANA, but the gap between YANA and DPSGD actually sh shrinks as the uh, data set gets larger and the uh, standard derivation gets smaller. So, although our algorithm cannot provide like rigorous privacy guarantee, we still want to evaluate our model uh, evaluate the privacy of our model with some kind of metrics, and this motivates us to use another tool, the privacy testing, to measure the privacy of the trained model by just like attack it. And the attack we use in our work is the secret share attack. Uh, the basic idea is uh, we try to test the unintended memorization of the trained model. As shown in this example, say if we train the model with some text data, uh, contain Alice SSM, and uh, later on, after train, after the train finish, uh, we can actually reconstruct this person's SSM. Then this is kind of unintended memorization um, because uh, it's actually reveal the data irrelevant to the learning task. And to uh, test the unintended memorization, the steps we take are shown like this. We first inject some out of distribution examples into the training data, which are called canary. Uh, so for example, we can inject some text uh, like SSN is such a number sequence. And then after the model is trained, we can evaluate the unintended memory uh, memorization by comparing the loss of the canary and the loss of some other similar number sequence uh, that are not injected into the training example. Um, so as shown in this figure, uh, usually we inject uh, canaries with uh, multiple times, and uh, those number of in injections are shown in the x-axis, and for the y-axis, we uh, 
we show the exposure, which measures the actual difference between the losses of the canary and the non-injected examples. And um, the more the exposure, the less privacy protection a model actually provides. Um, so, uh, yeah, we will use the um, SQL share test to measure the privacy of our model uh, trained by Yana. And here comes the evaluation. We actually evaluated on two different tasks. One is the next movie prediction on a public data set movie lens. And we also evaluate our method on uh, the KG entity embedding generation on a real world large scale industry data set. Note that for the KG entity embedding generation, we, uh, we experiment with two variations of the data set. One has 100K vocabularies, and the other has 5 million vocabularies. And basically, the vocabulary size uh, decides the model size. So uh, with these two variations, we can uh, actually study how our, mod uh, how our algorithm performs on the medium scale to large scale data set and models. And um, for the model architectures, we use the dual, dual encoder model, which is a typical embedding-based recommendation models. And um, yeah, I have a figure illustrated here. Um, this is for the next movie prediction task. Um, for this task, we take a user's movie watching history and try to predict the next movie for this user. Um, so um, for the KG entity embedding generation, uh, we also use a similar model architecture, but the key point is the model size is much larger compared to the next movie prediction model. And for the KG entity generation, uh, embedding generation task, we actually generate the knowledge graph entity embeddings for downstream recommendation models. And here are the results we got for the movie land, uh, next movie prediction task. So um, for experiments, we, um, we train the model with three different algorithms, the normal SGD, DPSGD, and IANA. So we use the, uh, the baseline is the model performance uh, when training with SGD without any, adding any noise. And uh, for the DPSGD and IANA, we actually use two different noise multipliers, 0.01 and 0.001. We uh, measure the model performance using precision, recall, and the uh, exposure of the secret share test. Here I only show the precision because recall also follow the similar trend. In the last share, um, we see that YAN actually lead to comparable or better model precision compared to the traditional DPSGD, and it effectively reduces the exposure and thus the privacy risk, as shown by this secret share attack uh, result. So these are the uh, results we got for the KG entity embedding generation. Basically, uh, we see a similar result. YANA perform better or comparable to uh, DPSGD, and also it can give some privacy protection. One thing to note is that for the large scale 5 million data set, we don't have any result for the norm traditional DPSGD because uh, the training speed is just too slow to produce any meaningful result. And here is the um, result for the training speed. Um, so um, it is easy to see that adding noise uh, slows down the training speed as both DPSGD and IANA lead to slower training speed compared to SGD. However, the traditional DPSGD suffers more severely uh, due to the communication and the computation overhead. And uh, for the industry 100K case, uh, IANA is, performs like uh, the training speed of IANA is like 4.7 uh, times faster than DPSGD. And when we go to a really large scale data set and model, the speed up is more significant and we observe like four, 54 times um, speed up for IANA compared to the DPSGD. Yeah, and uh, these are final uh, takeaways. And uh, in a summary, we 
proposed Yana to address the snow list issue when training large scale embedding based deep neural network with, uh, yeah. And uh, we conclude that Yana can actually unblock training of such model and provide uh, decent practical privacy protection. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there's a bunch of questions online. Um, let's see, the most upvoted one is uh, kind of high level. Can you elaborate on the privacy concerns of large, jail, large scale uh, SGD for recommender systems? Um, the privacy concerns? Yeah, I think mm -hmm. from early on in the talk, just kind of you know, the motivation for looking at uh -huh. what is the what are the privacy concerns that can come up with these large-scale SGD systems? Oh, it's because um, this large-scale model is like personalization model, so uh, it has the potential to reveal some uh, user preference or user behavior, uh, like, uh, so, and also, yeah, so for example, based on your uh, history, it may predict some uh, really personalized uh, preference on something that maybe a user do not want to reveal. So that is kind of the privacy concern. Great. And there's uh, some more uh, questions to follow up with offline. But okay. let's thank again uh, Lynn for her talk. Okay, thank you. And that concludes the large scale recommendation session. Uh, thanks everyone for attending and thanks again to all of our speakers. Next up, we have the poster session and break um, that's sponsored by Curteo uh, AI Lab. I think there's also a few sponsor meetups. Um, I think it's also the last session to go visit the sponsor booths. So if you haven't already dropped by and said hi to, to some of your favorite people, you can do that there. Uh, look forward to seeing you all at the next session too. Bye.